Good morning to everyone. Secretary General, now I feel that we have more to do because I see here a lot of ministers, a lot of people from the private sector. It's an honor to be here today promoting investments and we're ready. So before we start talking about the investment framework in Uzbekistan, uh, we would like to highlight from the UNWTO what's our vision on investments. So let's start. How is the world doing today? I see investors from all around the world. Thank you again, Minister, for making this full house from the private sector. This is the first time, maybe, Secretary General, that we have a full house General Assembly full of international investors together with ministers from all around the world. So, in the global investment outlook, where we are, let's start not with tourism. Let's start with all the economic sectors. What is happening in the world when it comes to, to, uh, to investments? Foreign direct investments grew 64% in 2021, reaching $1.6 trillion. Nonetheless, foreign direct investments declined 12% in 2022, and it fell to $1.3 trillion. And here the answer is really easy. Geopolitics is not helping us. When investors are seeking for investments, security and confidence and trust are crucial. And of course, thanks to the war in Ukraine, the most mature region in the world, that is Europe, dropped the investments when it comes to all the sectors. But however, we have to say that in general, when we talk about all the economic sectors, the developing countries accounted 70% of global foreign direct investments in 2022. That's a strong message because it's saying that investors are seeking to emerging destinations. And second of all, the value announced in greenfield projects in the service sector that, as all of us know, tourism is there, grew 68% in 2022. When we see the map, of global world investors. By far, United States is the top investor in the world. Second investor in the world is China. Third investor in the world is Japan. And then we go to Germany, UK, Canada, Sweden, Australia. So the map of the world is concentrated. So when we see the overall outlook of investments, we can say that they more mature countries are investing in the more emerging countries. But in tourism, I'm very happy to say that the panorama is absolutely different. So when we see, Secretary General was saying that we are partnering with the Financial Times because before, two years ago, it was very difficult to collect data on tourism investments. Today we are working with them and all of you have a report there where these facts and figures are there for you. So where we are in tourism. First of all, I have to say that we have more than 2,400 announced projects when it comes to investments in tourism. $175 billion were invested in tourism. But we have something to say. 66% of the projects are focused in hotel infrastructure. So here my first question comes to you. Don't you think that we need to diversify the way we promote investments? Of course, investment in infrastructure is crucial, but we need more. And all of you know better than me, tourism is part of a huge industry with more than 100 subsectors. We need to invest more in other type of services, in travel agencies, in technology, on education, etc. And thanks to these investments, 382,000 jobs were supported. Where we are when it comes to foreign direct investments, where are the private investors investing? So by far, Europe is leading the way. And of course, it has to be true because Europe is the top region when it comes to tourism. 50% of tourism is thanks to the European region. So when you see 1,000 projects and 51 billion investments only in Europe. But look something that is really curious. When you go to the Middle East, the Middle East is investing investors, private investors are investing more in the Middle East than in the USA. The US is 
the third country in the ranking when it comes to international arrivals. So that's another message. Latin America as well is booming with $27 billion investments. Asia Pacific is booming as well, $65 billion. So at the end, when we see the concentration of the private sector investors, United States is the top investor with 323 international projects, UK, Spain, France, Thailand, Germany. And it, this has a lot of sense because, of course, they are the most mature countries when it comes to tourism. But there is something really interesting, and we were uh, saying this during the last World Tourism Day in Riyadh. When we see the facts and figures, Saudi Arabia, just in 2022, had 80% growth on foreign direct investments. So if we see the numbers in tourism, the message is clear. Investments in tourism are booming, but we need to preserve those investments with security and with a new investment framework in order to keep growing our numbers. What is happening in the world when it comes to what are the countries that are receiving more products? So again, if you see the concentration is the same. We have here the US, UK, Spain, and by far, there is another example. In job creation, Mexico, China, and Spain are leading the way. So there's another key message. It's not only the amount of money that is coming to the country, it's the quality of the investments, and of course, the jobs that we are promoting to make this sustainable. And when we go to technology, I just spoke about the traditional facts and figures, but now, I'm going to talk a little bit on where we are with tourism and technology. The venture capital, where are they investing? So the venture capital, remember that during the pandemic, the only indicator that remained stable was investment on startups and investing on technology. $20 billion were invested during the pandemic when it comes to startups and tourism technology. Venture capital reached $48 billion in the last year, and basically, as I already mentioned, 27% was invested in 2021. And, again, where are the investors in technology focusing their investments? And here the panorama, again, is concentrated. North America, Asia Pacific, Europe. And if you see, when we talk about technology, 30% of the investments goes to travel startups, 25% goes to hospitality, and 10% goes to air transportation. And when we go, as Secretary General was mentioned, when we talk about tech leading entrepreneurs, again, they are concentrated. The top entrepreneurs in the world, the unicorns, evaluated in more than $1 billion, they are in, in the US and they are in India. We need to promote more the tourism innovation ecosystem to diversify not only the investments, but also the creation of tech entrepreneurs. And that's why we brand today, and you can see in the UNWTO booth, the four finalists of our startup competition, they are from Portugal, from France, from the UAE, um, from Japan, because that's the way that we can help them as well to access to venture capital and to pilot projects. When it comes to public investment in tourism, and this is another message, the sovereign funds, that's really important. The sovereign funds has a, a strong role and a, to, to play. So since 2016, public funds and sovereign funds has been investing in tourism. That's really new. 20, because normally speaking, the sovereign funds invest in health or in um, uh, insurance funds, but most of the times, the sovereign funds are not investing in tourism. But I have some good news. Uh, we have seen in the last report, Global Soaring Funds report, that $20 billion were invested in hotel and leisure. By far, the soaring funds in Europe are the ones investing in tourism, 58% of them. Then North America and some key players, Norway, Singapore, Saudi Arabia, and the European Union are diversifying their public investments and they are investing their public money in tourism. So, with that said, 
This is a traditional investment framework. This is what, normally speaking, countries do. So they do tax and incentives reliefs, they do government regulation to promote investments, and they do an investment strategy to go and promote knowledge and technology. But in the UNWTO, we want to work a little bit farther, and that's why we are working with the member states, with the ministries, not just to talk about tax reliefs and incentives. We need to talk about people, we need to talk about planet, and we need to talk about prosperity. Why? In people, all of you know, tourism is the most human economic sector. But tourism is the top employer of youth. Nonetheless, 16% of global population are young people, but more than one in five of them were not on education, employment, and training. So we cannot talk about a sustainable sector if we don't invest in education. 25% of the workforce in Europe only have secondary skills. But imagine the last message. Europe is the strongest region when it comes to tourism, when it comes to investments, but 25% of the workforce doesn't have good education. Another opportunity, almost 1 million jobs are needed to be created in vocational, in vocational tourism. So we need more technicians. In planet, when it comes to sustainability, I already mentioned that 66% of the investments goes to hotel infrastructure, but only a quarter of hotels have a climate action plan. So we need to plan again what type of buildings and what type of infrastructure we are creating for the sector. And there is a strong opportunity. $24 trillion is the investment opportunity for green buildings toward 2030. And last but not least, prosperity. The one I love because it's my passion, that is innovation and youth empowerment. So, prosperity. As all of us know, 80% of the tourism backbone are the small and medium enterprises. So, but I don't know if you know, in tourism, 50% of SMEs only invest less than $5,000 on digital transformation. So, where is the balance? We need to mind that gap because we need that everyone goes into the digital strategy if we want to be sustainable as well. And, as well, um, as I already mentioned, through our UNWTO programs we have seen that the winners of the, of the startup competitions are gaining a lot of resources, more than two billion funded and raised, thanks to their quality. So there's, again, a strong opportunities to promote investments. So just to end the framework before I start being Uzbek by heart and promoting the, the guideline of Uzbekistan, as Secretary General mentioned, we are working with all the regions of the world. So I see here happy faces because I have the commitment, we have the commitment with Peru, with Albania, with Morocco, with Colombia, they are on the, the, on the same row with Zambia, all of them, and here as well. We are working with Mauritius, with Portugal, with everyone that is here, with Spain. So we need more of these in order to attract a better framework and to help the investors to understand that this is not a traditional sector. So now let's start and let's talk a little bit about Uzbekistan and what we are working together with the ministry. What do we see? First of all, why do we need to invest in this amazing country? First of all, seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites, crucial crossroads along ancient Silk Road, economic growth and stability, 5% of global GDP growth in the last five years, 5% projected growth as well. Attractive incentive schemes, 21 free economic zones, two touristic specialized zones, and when it comes to a strategic location infrastructure, 11 international airports and 100 kilometers road network. So, here I can say something that is crucial for an investor. 41% was 
the service sector contribution to the GDP, where is tourism. 7% of it goes to tourism, trade, accommodation, and catering. And Uzbekistan made history in 2019 with the largest tourism contribution with $1.6 billion. When it comes to the investment outlook, according to UNTAD, our sister agency, foreign direct investment inflows tripled from 2011 to 2022. That's really interesting because not many countries in the world can say that have tripled their investments in tourism. 727 investment projects accounted in 1.9 billion. And the leading investors, who is investing in Uzbekistan? US, Japan, UAE, China, Russia. Basically, we can see the strong growth, what I was mentioning before. That's why I love data, because at the end of the day, the data speaks by itself. Then, just to end, the competitiveness and added value proposition. Uzbekistan is leading the new framework. So I was talking about the economic framework and about the incentives. But yesterday, as, as SG mentioned, we presented the academy. So investing in people is leading and is uh, working on the same way, on the same path. So uh, the country is investing in an academy in Samarkand to train all the teachers in Samarkand and to help them to update the way they teach tourism and to lead the way as well to help and to create a strong workforce here in Samarkand for the country. And in the tourism sector, again, 40% of all service exports, 5.2 million arrivals and 1.4 billion expenditure thanks to tourism. And last but not least, I'm not going to talk deeply on this, but basically there are different schemes to invest from foreign film companies, so to attract investments as well. Entertainment is crucial in tourism, entrepreneurship and innovation incentives, development of tourism incentives and loans. And this is for all the investors to know, these are, these are the, the projects that have been a priority for the country. So basically, there are five current projects that are seeking for investments all around the country uh, with a total of $2.8 billion. So at the end, the country is ready. As we mentioned before, while foreign direct investment in all the sectors has been dropped, in the tourism sector, we are seeing something absolutely different. We are seeing that tourism is going up. And Uzbekistan has been demonstrating the leadership, not only in the investment schemes, but also attracting investors in the tourism sector. So remember always our key message. People in tourism is everything. People is in the center of our economic sector. Sustainability is our planet, our natural resources that thank to them we have tourism. And last but not least, prosperity, that is innovation and technology that lead us the way to create a more modern and prosperous tourism sector. So with that said, um, I want to end here. All of you have the QR codes to download the guideline of Uzbekistan. So I really encourage all of you to promote this beautiful country. Thank you again, Minister. Thank you again, Secretary General. And thank you again, all the member states that are here since 9.30, listening to investments and to the private sector. Enjoy the, the journey. Natalia, thank you very much. And it's always wonderful to hear Natalia speak, but she gives us the raw data. She puts it all in context, and she makes it very clear not only where we need to invest, how, who, when, and how much, which is invaluable.